will formally inaugurate uh, proceedings over here. All right. And uh, I will start off with the, yeah, I will share this with you. So can everybody see that? Uh, can everybody see this blank screen over here, the ice cream? Is it yes, visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. Thank you. So now, uh, what, uh, so where shall we, you know, start off from in quantum mechanics? So what we will do is that we will initially start off with the Schrodinger equation, of course. Uh, what I will do is that I will give you what I call as, uh, uh, I call them cheat sheets, but they are not really cheat sheets, okay? They're, these are things that you need to remember, okay? In order to do problems. So I will start off with sheets like that. I have one for practically every topic, all right? And these are things you will need to remember, and then we will move on to problems, okay? And I will try to do the problems so that the concepts develop as long as uh, you know as we move al move along with the problems. So just give me a little minute, okay? So as I said, you know, so this is essentially I would say a recall, all right, for you all. Uh, okay, uh, I have some issue with my forefinger. I'm not able to bend it too well. So, you know, if things are not visible, just tell me, I will try and write a little bigger or a little differently, all right? Uh, I have some pain there, so it's not working very well, all right? So just in case you not, are not able to see what I'm writing, just tell me, okay? So we'll start off with the Schrodinger equation. Okay, and uh, as you well know, the Schrodinger equation essentially has two parts, right? And or rather the Hamiltonian, okay, which you will write is has two parts. And one of them is of course the kinetic energy, which we will write down over here like this. So this is the kinetic energy operator. And this of course operates on a wave function, which is usually a function of position and time, right? So this is your kinetic energy. And then, of course, you have essentially your potential energy. And in general, you would write the potential again as a function of position and time, right? And then, of course, this operates on your wave function. And this is essentially your potential energy. And then, of course, you have over here your energy operator. So I will call this the total energy. So very, very simple way of looking at the Schrodinger equation. Of course, I've written the time dependent one is that it is kinetic energy plus potential energy equal to total energy. Okay. So now a few things to remember over here, the kinetic energy is being written in the form of p square by 2m, right? So we are not writing it as the usual form of half mv square. We write it as p square by 2m, where p, of course, is your linear momentum. And here, your p operator, so I should actually put cap over here. Your p operator is nothing but minus i h cross del, all right? So this is the thing. And your i h cross do by do t is nothing but your energy operator. Okay, so this is certain things that you should just remember. Now, most of the problems that you will give does not really involve this complete, this particular version of the uh, Schrodinger equation, uh, simply because you deal with the case of uh, a potential which is time independent, okay? So essentially you deal with the case of a time independent potential so I know that I'm essentially repeating things that you have learned already in first semester. But this is, as I said, just a refreshing, blowing off all the cobwebs, and then we'll get started, OK? So time independent potential is what essentially? It is essentially a situation where your VRT, which is the very general form of the potential, is nothing but VR. So you have no time dependence, right? Yeah. And in which case we know that the wave function can be given a very special form. Okay, and what is that special form? Essentially, it can be written in two parts. One, which is only position dependent and the other part, which is 
time dependent okay now uh, if you kind of uh, basically put this in okay you put this format in to this particular equation here the schrodinger equation what do you essentially end up getting so let me just write it down you will essentially end up getting your you know after certain amount of manipulation which i'm not going to show to you you've done this already you will end up getting the left hand side completely dependent on position and the right hand side completely dependent on time so essentially you will get something like this all right is equal to minus h cross square by 2m del square chi r right plus v of r and this is equal to 1 upon of t by h cross d by dt so essentially you will get these two and what is this actually equal to this is nothing but equal to e okay i hope you can see that oh that's an ugly e doesn't matter yeah so this is what you will get okay now what is our basic uh, how do we actually go ahead and handle it we handle it by basic i mean what was our rationale for this so the rationale was of course you have a complete a function of position alone is equal to a function of time alone and the only way that can ever work is if both of them are equal to a constant and this constant is what you're calling as the energy eigen value of the system okay so now basically you get now two equations one is of course an energy eigen value equation which is also your time independent schrodinger equation right so you will get over here essentially minus h cross square by 2m okay so you will get del square chi r plus v of r chi of r is equal to e chi of r right that is essentially your time independent schrodinger equation all right and please remember in terms of the hamiltonian you could just write it as hamiltonian operating on chi of r is equal to e chi of r so this is essentially an eigen value equation for the hamiltonian correct and what is the other equation and this is where i you know because we are going to be actually paying attention to the time dependent part in fact you see you will find that there are places where you know uh the time dependence will play a role in the way the you know the solutions behave okay as a function of time so let's just check it out over here f of t okay and what do you get over here this is going to be e f of t this is the other equation so this is the first equation that you get this is the other equation that you get and this of course what is going to be the solution of this this you will get essentially uh, i'm not writing down the full solution it will be there in the notes that i have sent you and i think you already know this your f of t is going to be some constant c into e to the power of minus i by h cross e t so what is there by your total solution okay so your total solution please remember is nothing but it's going to be a function of position as well as time so you will have this which is a function of position alone which comes as a solution of this particular equation okay and then you have this e to the power of minus i by h cross et okay where your c okay i have not written it essentially you can absorb it into the normalization constant which you will put for your chi of r right so that is essentially it now um uh what did i want to say this is extremely important uh these solutions are special okay so these solutions are special all right again reminding you i think you all know it already and why are these solutions special okay 
So let us now uh, recall what is really the significance of a wave function. The significance of a wave function is that you take the mod of the wave function square and it essentially gives you the probability of finding the particle or the system at those particular coordinates, okay? Uh, it basically gives you the probability, right? So if I essentially have psi of RT, okay? I take mod square of that and I get the probability of finding the particle at that position at that particular point of time. Correct. So let us now see uh, what is essentially your, uh, just one second, somehow getting, don't seem to have any space on my table, right? So essentially we are going to look at how to write, let us say uh, this quantity, right? This is the probability of finding the system at uh, a particular position at a particular point of time. And this, as you know, is nothing but your wave function psi RT, okay, mod square, correct? Now, what happens in this particular case, it will be nothing but this quantity, okay, into the same quantity complex conjugate, right? So what does one, one get in that case? We'll essentially get, of course, a chi of r, chi star of r, right? That is one. And what you will get over here is an e to the power of minus i by h cross et. And you take the complex conjugate of this one your minus i minus sign goes to plus, right? So you will get an e to the power of i by h cross et. So which means you're left with mod of chi r square, which is time independent. So because this is time independent, you call these as stationary states, okay? So I hope because we are very often going to be just referring to stationary states and uh, you know you need to be absolutely confident about what these are okay so let me just go to the next page okay so obviously what did we see your prt is going to be independent of time okay uh, therefore such states are called stationary states. So remember this, stationary states are essentially nothing but solutions of the Schrodinger time independent equation, okay? So you should immediately know which equation solutions they are, all right? So these are called stationary states. Okay, so now I think, um, we have kind of done a overview of the, what do you call, the basic concepts that I wanted to talk about. We'll be bringing in things as on how we go over, uh, but let's get started on, um, I would say the free particle. Okay, so let's start off with the free particle. So I'm going to stop over here, all right? And we will start off with the Free particle. So let's basically what we are going to do is we are going to look at solutions because this is a hot favorite amongst all people. They keep asking for uh, one dimensional problems. Okay, so solutions of um, one dimensional Schrodinger equation. So over uh, this today and the next few sessions, okay quite a few sessions, we will be essentially just doing this, okay? All right, so now, uh, of course, we will start off with the simplest form, simplest form of V of uh, T actually. So let's of course, right now, consider only on the time independent part. And 
this we will start off with the first v of r equal to 0 okay now i need not have gone for 0 i think i have perhaps explained this uh, uh, some other time i could have also taken it as some constant okay constant please remember over the entire space all right now of course uh, the moment you have this what what you have to remember is of course that your force is nothing but the negative gradient of the potential so if your v is equal to zero or v is a constant zero is a special case of a constant then f is zero implies force free right the situation is force free implies that you have a free particle okay so this is all that it requires all right now let's go and see what is the solution that is suggested by the Schrodinger time independent equation, right? So what is the solution that is suggested? So you have essentially minus h cross square by 2m, okay? d square by dx square, okay? Uh, is equal to e chi of x. Now remember, there is only one thing that is specified over here, all right? And what is that? That is actually your energy. All right, there's no other specification whatsoever, except of course that you've already said that the potential is completely zero everywhere or constant everywhere. It doesn't matter. It's one and the same thing. Okay. So what have you suggested over here? Essentially, what is an alternate way of stating this? An alternate way of stating is that the entire energy, the total energy, which is E, is completely kinetic. Okay. It's a kinetic energy, right? So when the energy of a system is completely kinetic please remember it is essentially a free particle all right now what are the solutions for these of course the solutions the most general solutions that you can write down are the plane wave solutions right so the solutions are plane wave solutions and the best way of writing it for you would be essentially this is going to be a e to the power of i k so okay here i'm essentially i've gone on to one dimensions as i told you i kind of did it without really saying it i'm not really doing a 3d problem here i'm doing a 1d problem like i suggested over here and i'm just writing it in x you could write it in y in z it doesn't matter you can write it okay or in r for that matter all right but the point is that here we are doing it in x all right so this is going to be a uh, solution can be written like this. And as I said, this is nothing but a plane wave, correct? But this is what you would say, it is progressing in the plus x direction. Okay. And this is also a plane wave. Okay, which is progressing in the negative x direction. Okay, and how did I come to plus uh, x or minus x? Obviously from the sign here, right? This is minus and here is, since I have not written it, I'm assuming it to be a plus, correct? So it's a plus. So let me write it down so that the notes later on don't create a extra confusion. Right, now, uh, I'm writing kx here, right? I'm writing kx here. But what would be the most general solution? Okay. The most general solution, of course, would be a k dot r, right? And uh, how would I write that? Essentially, you would have an i kx plus a j k y plus a k k z. Okay. This is why people write it as x y z. All right. Doesn't matter x and then this is j y plus k z of course so you will have what you will have a k x x plus a k y y plus a k z z over here okay and in one dimension of course in 1d essentially you're just taking one of the components and here we are choosing it to be a k x 
of course it is a k it's it's the uh, projection of the wave vector in the direction of x okay yes yeah, sometimes you may need to split up the problem in three dimensions all right so you should remember what exactly you are doing all right now what is the complete solution for this of course the complete solution all right i am not written the correct form that should be this x of t will be what it will be nothing but some normalization constant which of course is a bit tricky when it comes to free particles this e to the power of minus i e by h cross t okay so this is your total solution your complete solution for the free particle okay general solution of course looks like this yeah so let us now uh, so any major issues so far is everybody happy with whatever i have told you or are there any issues because now we will start looking at some problems all right so any any problems okay i'm going to stop the share and i'm going to ask so uh did we lose some people it looks like that i think we have lost uh, somebody i don't know who okay yeah so any issues so far is this all kind of familiar ground that we have gone through no issues ma'am no, no issues ma fantastic okay so now what we will do is i'm going to show you a problem all right so i will just uh, yeah we are going to basically look at oh, where did my yeah okay so i right now have uh, two problems which i have put up over here okay so let's have a look at the first problem so what has been said over here are you able to see this please is this visible to you this word document yes ma'am okay so what does it say over here it says that there is a free particle in one dimension and what is the state described by okay so please have a look it says uh, psi of x is equal to a e to the power of i p x minus e t by h cross all right plus b e to the power of minus i p x minus e t whole thing by h cross and then it has asked you for the probability density okay so there is a possibility that you might have done this problem in your first semester all right um you did it i think the this particular set of uh, things were covered by i think meera ma'am so she may have done it when she discussed the first uh, the free particle all right so let me uh, so it's it makes sense to just run through this argument once again uh, essentially i'll tell you why because you can see that there is a way in which statements may be made okay which may th throw you a little off gear all right and what is the way of throwing you off gear over here is because you can see that there is a time dependence put now what i have done over here is i have picked this problem and i've told you this is a free particle problem so thereby you may be immediately able to identify that hey this time part of it is not going to bother me too much okay but suppose it is given in a milieu of a whole bunch of other problems it may not look that straight forward okay so please please don't let other people throw you off track okay you're smart okay and you should be able to recognize a problem for what it is all right so what do we have to do over here we have to essentially calculate the probability current density all right so let's just give it a shot all right so let me see if i can um yeah either i can just solve it so maybe i will do the first few steps um myself all right and then we will try and go over to uh, either we can continue like that or we can you know just move over to the scanned copy that i have of the solution right uh but for that i think i should have sent it over to you before i didn't do that so we will just wait all right so please have a, an idea of what the solutions look like okay now the first solution you have is a p by m so p of course is momentum okay so it tells you that is it is essentially p by m will be nothing but a velocity right yeah and if you look at the other terms okay you will see that there are just one second i have to admit somebody you will see that there is a velocity term multiplying all of them the factor in front is changing okay the factor in front is changing 
you know that this is actually a dimensionless quantity your a and your b it's a dimensionless quantity so you really need your uh, none of them are going to really change the dimensions okay so all of them are equally probable but what you have to keep in mind is that one of these represents a forward moving wave and the other a backward moving wave okay so it's likely that you're going to get the difference of the two okay now the question is whether it is mod a minus mod b or it's mod a square minus mod b square now why you can do some clever guessing and get the right answer which is what you should do in a competitive exam i think there is some value in trying to do this in the formal way all right so um let me just get back to the ice cream so everybody remembers this problem i'm going to write down the wave function again don't worry okay but you know that you have been given a wave function and you've been asked to find out the probability current density the wave function i am trying telling you is basically a free particle wave function fine so i stop the share now get back to the ice cream okay so i will probably continue on the same page okay so so what do we have now i will just uh, copy the wave function down essentially you've been told that your psi of xt is equal to you have an a e to the power of and this is i p x minus e t sorry there is also an i over there right minus i e t the whole thing by h cross plus b e to the power of here you have a minus i p x minus i e t by h cross right and uh, so you have to find the probability density now let us just simplify this this is going to be nothing but a e to the power of i p by h cross x e to the power of minus i by h cross e t correct plus b e to the power of minus i p by h cross x okay e to the power of minus i by h cross e t okay and then what do you get essentially you will get over here an a e to the power of i p by h cross x plus b e to the power of minus i p by h cross x e to the power of minus i by h cross e t correct and this hope i hope you know this form will convince you that this is nothing but your uh, what do you call it uh, one uh, free particle solution right so let me just get back here oh what happened okay i think i'm having some problems loading the whole thing somewhere i had written the total solution okay so the total solution okay you can see it over here is essentially the solution of the what do you call the schrodinger one dimensional time independent equation okay so that is essentially this correct this thing which you have between brackets and then of course you have your time dependent part so what do you do when you want to calculate the probability density just ignore the time dependent part okay it's not essential here all right so let's do that then how do we go ahead and solve the time, uh, the uh, what do you call it for the probability density okay so i'm just going to write that down and i will then uh, perhaps show you the solution using my um, scan notes all right so let's first of all write down the um, how do you calculate the probability current density okay so this is again now a formula that should be like the back of your own hand okay you have to remember it all right like the schrodinger equation please 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 commit to memory how the probability current density is you may be able to do the derivation and get it for you but at least a lot of you i'm hoping will be going out and writing the competitive examinations and the competitive examinations when you write it the idea is essentially to save yourselves time right so you do not have time 
to sit in derived formulae all right uh, i unfortunately belong to that set of people who can never remember formulae all right so i have to derive it but luckily for me i don't have to write competitive exams anymore so for you please try and commit these things to memory so i'm i'm going to point out those things which you just need to remember cold all right so probability current density okay so how do we uh, write it so usually it's represented as a j and this is going to be h cross by 2 im and then you have essentially your star x okay d i'm usually you will write it as a partial derivative but here i'm writing it as a total derivative because it's a one dimensional problem all right so here you go minus okay so this is your formula all right so now let me just go ahead and show you the solution maybe we can do one or two more steps okay i don't know i think i'll just go ahead and show you the solution okay so i hope you can uh, remember this i'm going to stop sharing this and let's see if i can now share the scanned solution so hopefully we can just follow it out and you can see now why i absolutely didn't want to show you the first page because it's pathetic okay so hopefully this will be a bit clear all right is this clear to everybody if you have trouble seeing it i will just work out the solution it's not a problem can everybody see this yes ma'am yes ma'am ha huh? is it okay chetan i mean you can see it right yes no problems okay fine so as you can see over here so let me just get my spotlight one second uh it right okay so as you can see i have written down the wave function over here and as i told you we don't need to be worrying about the time dependent part your current density has only operators in position please remember that okay so the time dependent part is going to remain unaffected at the time being okay over here so what do we have now over here uh, i have done a derivative with respect to x and you will get this as your solution of course you will have an ip by h cross which will come out and remember i had written it in terms of k right but p by h cross is nothing p is what h cross k so I, if i have p by h cross it's nothing but k and then it will reduce to the format that you had earlier but here let us just stick to p by h cross because that is how the problem was stated okay uh, for some reason i have a blue background anyway doesn't matter okay so now you have ip by h cross a e to the power of ipx by h cross plus then of course here when you do a derivation you will get it with the negative sign b e to the power of minus ipx by h cross go down further if you take the uh, complex conjugate okay of course you will get a star e to the power of minus ipx by h cross plus b star e to the power of ipx by h cross okay and you take the derivative of that you will get essentially the same thing except the signs will flip right here you get a negative sign here you'll get a positive sign right now you do the basically the what do you call it the j so j is going to be what you essentially have psi star which is this right you have this psi star multiplying essentially d psi x by dx which is essentially this right this part of it right minus then you have uh, psi which is essentially i have written it over here on top okay this one okay and you multiply it with the d by d dx of psi x right uh, sorry psi star x right so that is what you do carry out the multiplication right you carry out the multiplication and once you carry out the multiplication you will realize so let me go further that essentially you get 
uh, p by 2m into 2 mod a square minus 2 mod b square. So obviously your 2 comes out, it cancels off with the 2 here and you will get a p by m into mod a square minus mod b square. Now please remember, if you remember your uh, waves, okay, uh, you have an amplitude, right? Yeah. So you have this function which is changing with respect to position and time and there is this factor that multiplies it which you call as the amplitude. Now the amplitude square, okay, is what represents the intensity, right? So what you have over here is the essentially the difference between the intensities which is progressing in the positive x direction and the intensity which is progressing in the negative x direction. So essentially you're getting the net balance, okay? And that is being multiplied by the velocity. Now keep this concept in your head because it will allow you to get solutions without doing the detailed working out. So as I've written over here, was the detailed working out essential? No. You had your psi x, um, if it is equal to a e to the power of i k x, then mod psi x square is nothing but mod a square. And this is probability of the plane wave solution moving in the positive x direction at the position x. Similarly, if psi x was just equal to e to the power of minus i uh, b into e to the power of minus i k x, then mod psi x square would be equal to mod b square. Okay, so obviously this is the probability for the plane wave solution moving in the negative x direction at x. Okay, so if your psi x is now a combination of the two, obviously what you are going to get your probability density current will be nothing but velocity into mod a square minus mod b square. So which will be nothing but p by m into mod a square into mod b square. So I think this is something that you all of you will be aware of. You may not have done, some of you may not have actually worked it out, but I would suggest that you actually, now that you know the solution, doesn't matter, don't look at it, try and work it out, okay? Yeah, uh, so let's just get back to the problem, okay? We now know the answer. So where is it? I would actually have it in the, yeah. So as you can see, which is your solution? Your solution is D, okay? Because it is essentially mod A square minus mod B square into P by M. Now, again, you know, you may remember forward moving wave and you may remember backward moving wave, okay? But then there is a confusion and you may remember that, okay, you know, it has to be multiplied by the velocity, which is P by M. But then there is a confusion between, as I say, the second one, yeah, which is mod A minus mod B into P, P by M. And here it is the fourth one, mod A square minus mod B square into P by M. And in which case you should remember this whole analogy of amplitude and intensity. Okay, so when there is actually movement transfer of energy, so to speak, okay. Here, of course, you're not talking in terms of energy, you're talking in terms of probability distribution, all right. But in some sense, you will find that if you att attach some kind of energy with that, it will also work out in terms of energy, all right? Uh, so the thing is that what you have to remember that it's always the intensities that matter, okay? So it's mod A square minus mod B square. All right, so here is now the second problem. Again, something you might have seen before. And what we are asking over here is that, what would be the wave function of a free particle with a well-defined energy, but completely unknown direction, okay? So essentially, what are you saying? You're saying that you're taking the solution of the Schrodinger equation, of course, the time-independent Schrodinger equation, where that E is well-specified. So the particle energy is extremely well-known. However, you're saying now that the direction is completely unknown. So to do this, I will just go back to my notes again. All right, so I'm going to stop the share. So any doubts with respect to the first problem? Okay, the way we interpreted, if you have some alternate interpretation, you didn't like what I explained, please go ahead, we can have a discussion, okay? 
because as i said the first few classes we'll just take it a bit slow and then we'll just ramp it up so that you know i mean i'm completely sure that you are you know you have basically the you know it's just like getting the wheel in motion okay yeah so is it all right everybody good with the first solution any issues yes, no. yeah okay fine i think somebody did say something i didn't get it but it's all right okay so let's now just uh, get to the uh, what do you call it the solution the second problem mm, yeah okay so here we are okay this is a bit bad all right but uh, yeah let's see otherwise i will try and uh, you know send a better scanned version of this so what is the uh, you know the wave function of the free particle with well defined energy but completely unknown direction so what we have is uh, you know when you say well defined energy please remember what really affects the solution is essentially the k right yeah so let me just um, yeah stop the share one instant and let me get to my ice cream okay so yeah i will share it yeah so now let us just uh, yeah just stop it over here because this solution you've kind of seen right so when i say uh, well defined energy right what does it essentially mean it means that your e value is fixed right okay now additionally we have to take the fact that this is a free particle correct and free particle means entire energy is kinetic right your entire energy is kinetic sorry i should cross my t yeah if entire energy is kinetic it means that essentially your e is equal to p square by 2m okay which means that it is nothing but h cross k whole square by 2m i'm not really bothering to put the vectorial signs on the k we are assuming it's going to be just the modular square okay here since it's one dimensional it's not a crime to put this all right so this implies that your uh, essentially your k square is going to be nothing but 2 m e by uh, h cross right am i right h cross square my mistake yeah now uh, this implies of course that your k square uh, sorry i shouldn't write k square k is equal to root of 2 m e by h cross and of course you have a plus or minus sign correct now what we are basically trying to say essentially is that the magnitude of k sorry of k is fixed the magnitude of k is fixed right so you can only have a plus root of 2me by h cross or you can have a minus root of 2me by h cross okay no other value is actually permitted right so now let's get back to the solution All right okay maybe i shouldn't have come back here right so now the thing is that uh, what you have to okay i think i i will just do this on my ice cream okay i'm not sure this is kind of visible to all of you i am having trouble seeing it myself so let's get back to this one okay so basically all right okay you have your um, um, you know so your j is equal to what it's equal to p by m okay what we found out from the earlier problem mod of a square minus mod of b square okay 
now the thing is that uh what what are we supposed to find out we have a well defined energy which means that the magnitude of k is fixed right that we know but direction is completely unknown okay so if direction is completely unknown now remember this your probability uh your j okay if it is progressing in positive direction okay yeah what does it need it needs your mod a square to be greater than your mod b square correct on the other hand if it is moving in the negative x direction right yeah so this is positive this is negative okay it has to be your mod a square should be less than your mod b square okay so now you are unaware of which direction okay the system is proceeding in the particle is proceeding in right so your probability density current does not have a net direction it's neither in the positive x direction nor is it in the negative x direction what does that mean it means it has to be zero okay so for unknown direction for completely unknown direction unknown direction okay j actually has to be equal to 0 which implies that mod a square must be equal to mod b square okay so therefore um yeah so the thing is that um, yeah so that that is essentially your solution your solution is that your mod a square must be equal to mod b square which means that your a can be either plus or minus b okay so your solution thereby your chi of x should can be a e to the power of i k x all right then you can have either um plus a e to the power of minus i k x all right the other solution of course will completely eliminate the wave function itself okay so this we will not take okay so this is actually a trivial solution yeah there is no wave function itself all right so we will go for this top one where a e to the power of ikx is equal plus a e to the power of minus ikx is essentially your solution so your weights of the forward moving plane wave sorry forward moving plane wave and backward moving plane wave are one and the same okay so this is basically a case where it's a free particle energy is known exactly however the direction in which the system is progressing is it positive x is it negative x cannot be said and that is because the weightages of the forward moving wave and the backward moving wave plane wave is exactly the same all right so now what is this wave actually can anybody tell me what kind of a wave is this where it's neither moving forward nor it is moving backward so i would like standing some... wave absolutely it's a standing, yeah, standing. Wave. very good so it's a standing wave so what are you going to have now in the in the standing wave you are essentially going to have um what do you call it you are going to have essentially nodes yeah so there will be positions at which the probability of finding the particle is going to be zero all right so let me just share my uh, you know scanned copy once again and hopefully i'll be able to show you that particular diagram yeah this page is horrible let's go to the next page oh it's completely it's horrible okay so maybe i will give this as a solution uh, as a problem for all of you okay so all of you all right you know this is a standing wave right so let me just show you this much okay you can see that this is a standing wave right a e to the power of i k x plus a e to the power of minus i k x so as an assignment okay so what you want to do i will also write it and send it over to you what i want you to do is i want you to work out the pro the probability current density of, of such a wave okay is this clear and i want you to show me 
that it is indeed a standing wave and uh, maybe you can show me the condition of the nodes okay where will i find the nodes where the probability of finding the particle is going to go to zero is this all right what's the time right now okay seems to have yeah so it is exactly 2 o'clock all right so i'm going to uh, what i will do is that i will write it down at the end of the ice cream okay so maybe i'll do it down right away and i will share it with all of you and then i would like you to essentially you know uh, prove it to me that this is indeed a standing wave all right so where is my pen so you have now so therefore you have j is equal to a e to the power of i k x plus a e to the power of minus i k x okay uh, sorry this is not j i don't know what i was doing this is i of x all right so i would like you to find j for this chi of x and prove that this is a standing wave yeah right find condition for node position okay if possible so it is essentially a mathematical thing that you're going to get try and find it okay the condition for the node position all right okay i think uh, we will stop the share here all right and um, yeah so again uh, let me tell you what i always tell other students uh, is that we need more interaction okay yeah so if any time you don't like the way i'm doing things or you have your own opinion or you have an alternate solution please feel free to stop me and ask because believe me uh, you're not only helping yourself and me you will be helping me by asking me questions you will also help your other friends okay who may get new ideas and this whole thing is basically to make your mind flexible enough okay so that when you see a problem you don't feel like running away but rather you have at least three or four methods in which you can tackle it okay so that is the idea of this whole course is that when you see a problem each of you will at least have some three four ways of tackling that problem and you will not say i have never seen this in my life and you know i i'm i don't want to do it okay uh, very often that is unfortunately the way people feel and and some of you may already love problem solving hopefully by the end of this course all of you will love doing it okay uh, so any final doubts well, uh, with respect to what we have uh, gone over today yes no, no. assign okay. assignment the heading format that you said you ah, yeah assignment us. heading format i will again uh, so can we have an email group please this is my request yeah because i don't want to do this on whatsapp i can't do it on whatsapp is it a problem doing email can everybody do it yes ma'am is it okay yeah so if you can make an email group because you know whatsapp also my tendency is to try and read it on the phone and you know i don't have good eyesight anymore <laughs> you know so i really have trouble you know figuring out uh, things so i am hoping that won't be the case and what i am going to do is i am of course going to send you my ice cream notes i will also send you the recorded lecture and i will send you some parts of my scan notes which are kind of visible it will get better as we go along because as i said you know this this part of the notes i didn't do uh, online last time okay this part of the classes so as a result it's like a new fresh thing being tried out online and luckily the i scribe is helping okay this particular time so if you have any suggestions about how we could do it how could this format be more uh, effective you know suggestions are most most welcome all right so the uh, uh, what we can do with respect to the assignment titles let me just uh, you know do this last thing i will just put it on ice cream sorry i'm taking up a bit of time all right
okay so what you can do is you can put your uh, name okay can everybody see this underscore all right name underscore you can put uh, unit 3 all right and then you can put the assignment you know number okay so assignment number so you can just put a s s g n and then the number so if it is one it is one okay so we leave it like that name means put the shortest name okay like whatever you know meda or chetan or yeah zabiulla okay yeah nitin okay whatever all right so tanya i i will get all your names slowly all right manikanta okay so whatever so no need to put initials and all i don't think there's any repetition and unit 3 you need not write just put 3 okay underscore 3 and then assignment 1 so this 3 will give you a clue that this is from unit 3 all right so that you don't have confusion whether this is you know later on when you look at your own solutions you won't have confusion where, which unit it belongs to okay so just do it like this that way i also know whose assignment has come into me all right yeah and then as i give you more assignments you can put it as 2 3 4 whatever okay this you can change Okay, and if you wish, you need not even put this number. All right, so maybe we can go this way. Name, underscore three, underscore assignment number. Is that all right with everybody? Okay. Hmm? All right, so fine. And yeah, if you can make the email group and just send me a test mail, that would be nice. Okay, then I can send you more material by via mail as well. Okay, so that would also help me. Okay, and I will give you a link to this uh, particular group. So let me stop share again. All right, I think I'm already busting my time limit. So I will not keep you guys any longer. I will stop the recording.